the only people who can betray us are the ones we trust. Yo, she's spitting facts though. Hold up. Is that who I fucking think it is? Taking a ride with is that a real horse? Help me! Alright y'all, welcome back. And today, we're going to be taking a look at episode 6 of The Last of Us Show on HBO. So after last week's banger of episode, we kind of slowed things down in episode 6. Now even though this episode was a bit slower than last week's, we still get some awesome character development, interesting adaptations, and a surprising amount of foreshadowing to T-Loop Part 2. And we're going to be going through all of that and more in today's video. So obviously, spoiler warning. And also, if you're new here, uh... Oh, wait! Oh! Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with me so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoy. And without further ado, let's get it! So once again this week, there's no cold open. But instead, we get a quick flashback to the ending of last week's episode, and then we jump three months into the future. Which is kind of what happened in the game. Which is why in my previous video, I talked about how Naughty Dog was very intentional with the adaptation that they made in last week's episode, especially at the end. So if you haven't checked out last week's video, I suggest that you do. Because I do some pretty in-depth analysis on some things that happened in last week's episode that I think you might enjoy. Anyway, Joel and Ellie continue on their way to Wyoming in search of Tommy. And I do love the addition of Joel and Ellie running across some Native Americans on their journey. It makes things feel a lot more real and grounded and also leaves room for some quirky dialogue. What about the fireflies? We get those in the summer. Not the bugs, the people. There are <laughs> firefly people? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, these people say they haven't heard of anyone named Tommy coming through that area, and they kind of warn them about their journey going forward. But you never go past the river here. What's past the river? Death. Ooh. If your brother's west of the river, he's gone. And it's after this interaction where Joel has a little miniature panic attack, which we'll get into later. So Joel and Ellie continue on their journey, and there's actually a lot of really nice dialogue that happens when they stop to camp for the night. Joel and Ellie start talking about what they plan on doing after this whole journey of theirs is over. Now, spoiler warning for anybody who hasn't beaten The Last of Us Part 2. I'll probably put a timestamp up somewhere where you can skip to, but um, you have been warned if you haven't beat Part 2 yet. Now, Joel talks about having a ranch with sheep on it. Maybe an old farmhouse. Some land, a ranch. Cool. You too. Okay. Cheap. Sheep. Which is what Ellie and Dina have towards the tail end of The Last of Us Part 2. So that was kind of cool to see like a little bit of like where Ellie got the idea to have that ranch from. And Ellie talks about wanting to go to the moon. Which explains that nice moment in Part 2 when Joel gives Ellie that cassette for her birthday. Which has a recording of a lunar launch on it. But eventually, Ellie starts to talk about the vaccine that they're trying to make from her blood. And she's concerned whether it'll work or not. And she explains to Joel how she tried to save Sam back at the motel. I rubbed some of my blood into his bite. I know, I know it was stupid, but I wanted to save him. And Joel reassures her by saying, Marlene, she's a lot of things, but she's no fool. If she says they can do it, they can do it. I'm glad that they added this scene because it kind of like verbally confirms that Ellie actively wants to use her immunity to save people, which was part of the things that I was talking about in my previous video. Now, Joel seems to be having like a reoccurring dream in this segment, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, they eventually make it to the river that they were warned about, and we get to see the dam, which players of the game will be familiar with. But the next thing we know, Ellie and Joel are surrounded by people on horses with guns who proceed to check them for infections with a dog that they have, which leads to a moment of tension because Joel is fine, but Ellie on the other hand, even though she's immune, she still might technically be classified as infected to this dog. So after that whole bit is over, these people pretty much ask them what they're doing. And Joel tells them that they're looking for his brother, Tommy. And one of the ladies recognizes Joel's name and decides to bring them back to Jackson. Now, this is where another massive adaptation begins. Because in the first game, we never actually go into Jackson. This whole section of the game primarily takes place on the dam. And we later see Jackson from the outside, but we never actually go into it until The Last of Us Part 2. So all the Jackson scenes in this episode are mostly 
beautifully adapted while also being combined with key emotional moments from the game. Which ultimately changes how some of these moments feel in my personal opinion, but We'll cross that road when we get there. Now, upon entering Jackson, we get a really nice reunion between Tommy and Joel. Tommy! Hey. <laughs> now, after this reunion, Tommy takes him to get some food. And here's where we have another massive adaptation slash foreshadowing to part two. What? What's wrong with you? What about her manners? Hold up. Is that who I fucking think it is? What? Is that supposed to be uh Dina? Cause she kinda got the Dina fit on with that vest. Now we don't see this girl again in this episode or even hear her name. But anybody who's played The Last of Us Part 2 knows that that's Dina, like 100%. So I do like how the show planted that seed for us. But anyway, in this moment, we also find out that the woman who recognized Joel is actually Maria, Tommy's wife. Maria is family, actually. Oh shit. Oh hey. shit. Yeah. Congrats. Which I know probably got some people upset. I can already Stop. hear the people in the comments like, I know they keep on changing character skin tone. So after this, we get a little tour of Jackson. We also get another little Easter egg in the form of Ellie meeting Shimmer, which is her horse from part two. Joel and Tommy eventually break off from Ellie and Maria and have a little bit of a heart to heart moment. And it's during this moment we find out that the Fireflies are held up at the University of Colorado. And Joel asks Tommy for his help, which he refuses. And we get to see some good character development between Tommy and Joel. What, cause your wife won't let you? Joel, she the one who kept you off the radio? They didn't have to take me in, but they did. And all they ask is that I follow their rules. I'm your brother. Yeah, I'm aware. If folks find out we're up here? No, I heard. Wrong people might show up. So is that what I am? Am I the wrong people? Joel, those I'm Those things I did, Tommy, those things that you judge me for. I did those things to keep us alive. We did those things. They weren't things. We murdered people. Now I said this before, but I really like how the show is like leaning more into like the darker side of Joel and like some of the things that him and Tommy had to do to survive during like the early days of the outbreak. I definitely like the little seeds that they've been planting over the last couple of episodes. But anyway, we find out the reason why Tommy can't help them is because Maria is pregnant. And I'm not gonna lie, Joel is kind of an asshole for his response. I feel like I'd be a good dad. <laughs> Guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. And then Tommy says, Just because life stopped for you, doesn't mean it has to stop for me. Boom, roasted. After this, Joel sort of storms off and has another little miniature panic attack. And then he sees someone who reminds him of Sarah, and it's pretty obvious that he's dealing with some unresolved trauma. But anyway, on the other side of town, Ellie gets all cleaned up and then heads over to Tommy and Maria's house, where she learns about Sarah for the first time, and also receives a warning from Maria. Be careful who you put your faith in. The only people who can betray us are the ones we trust. Yo, she's spitting facts though. And I actually really like this moment because it's not just foreshadowing for us, the audience, but it's also planting that seed for Ellie as a character for the events to come. But anyway, Ellie goes to watch a movie or whatever, and Joel and Tommy meet up again to kind of squash the beef from earlier. And it's during this section where we see a different side of Joel, a more emotional and like vulnerable side of him. I saw a man kill his own brother to save her while well, I just watched. And today I thought that dog was going to tear her apart because it smelled something on her. And all I did was stand there. I was so afraid. You think I can still handle things, but no matter who I was, I'm weak. Lately there are these moments where the fear comes up out of nowhere and my heart it feels like it stopped. And I have dreams. What kind of dreams? I don't know. I just know that when I wake up, I've lost something. So this explains the panic attacks he was having as well as the reoccurring dreams that he has. And also during this moment, he tells Tommy about Ellie's immunity. So he asks Tommy to take Ellie, which he eventually agrees to do, but Ellie actually overheard the whole conversation. And when Joel approaches Ellie to tell her what's happening, there's a little bit of a confrontation between the two. You'll be way better off with Tommy. He knows the area better than I do. Do you right? give a shit about me or not? Of course I do. Then what are you so afraid of? 
Now in the game, Ellie sort of runs off after figuring out that Joel is trying to dump her onto Tommy. And in the game, you basically have to track her down through the forest while also fighting off raiders and stuff like that. Then you find her hiding out in a house and then this scene happens. I'm not her, you know. Maria told me about Sarah and- No, don't say another word. They don't do that shit. But I have lost people too. You have no idea what loss is. Everybody I have cared for has either died or left me. Everybody fucking except for you. So don't tell me that I'd be safe with somebody else because the truth is I would just be more scared. You're not my daughter. And I sure as hell ain't your dad. We're going our separate ways. Now for me personally, this moment definitely hit harder in the game. Now I'm not gonna lie, I kinda laughed when this moment happened in the show. I don't know if it was like the extra stuff we had to do in the game to get to that moment, or if it was like Bella Ramsey's performance in this scene, but this moment didn't really feel like earned to me. It kinda felt forced, if that makes any sense. I don't know, maybe I'm tripping, but that was just how I felt about this scene. Like it just kinda felt a little, a little forced. But later on, Joel, after having some deep thought and reminiscing of about his daughter, changes his mind and decides to continue the journey with Ellie. And then they're on the way to the university where the fireflies are held up. They really condensed a lot of stuff just now into a little ball. And we're treated to some more parallel dialogue from the game, as well as some cool character development moments where Joel teaches Ellie how to shoot. It doesn't aim right. You dick. <laughs> now they eventually make it to the university and after walking around for a little bit they kind of realize that something's a little off seeing as there's really nobody there and after doing a little bit of investigating they find out that the fireflies who were held up there have actually moved to salt lake city and before they can even fully grasp what's going on now they try to sneak out and they almost make it but then Oh wow. Now this is another moment where I definitely like the game's versions better. Because when this moment happened in the game, you felt that shit. But anyway, Ellie and Joel eventually get away and try to carry on, but eventually, Joel, after losing too much blood, passes out and falls off the horse. And the episode ends with Ellie trying to wake Joel up as he's passed out in the snow. Now I'm not gonna lie, during this last shot, that horse looked fake as hell. Is that a real horse? HELP ME! That horse is kind of just like, like frozen. Like, I don't know if that horse is supposed to be animated and they got the wrong file, or maybe they used like a standing horse, which doesn't really make sense for like a pull out wide shot. It, it kind of really wouldn't make sense to have a standing horse there. I don't really know what happened, but I posted this clip on TikTok, but someone who's like a horse expert or whatever said that that was a real horse and horses are like trained to stand still if their reins are dropped, which I definitely believe is a thing, but like, this horse wasn't moving like a muscle. His ears weren't moving a little bit, his head didn't move, and he's like stuck in like a position with like one of his legs up. So like, I'm not saying that I don't believe that like horses are trained to stand still when the reins are dropped, but I don't think they're trained to like literally freeze every muscle in their body when the reins are dropped. So I don't, I don't know what happened with this last shot, but that definitely like distracted me from like how important that moment was supposed to be at the end of the episode. And while I was editing this video, it actually came out that there was another mishap where you could actually see parts of the crew in one of the wide shots from earlier on in the episode, which you could easily fix by either masking them out or just pushing in on the shot a little bit. But yeah, this wouldn't be the first time that an HBO show has made a mistake like this. <coughs> <clears throat> Game of Thrones. But anyway, that was episode six of The Last of Us Show on HBO. Like I said before, it was definitely a slower paced episode, which I don't mind. And I'm fine with the adaptations as well as like the foreshadowing that they made in the show. 
It would have been cool to see some action from the damn sequence, and I do feel like they rushed through the university section just a little bit, but hey, it is what it is. But I really did like the emotional stuff that we got to see with like Joel and Tommy, because it's definitely a side of Joel that we don't really see like almost ever in the game, at least in the first part. Now next week's episode is titled Left Behind, which is appropriately named because we're probably going to be diving into Ellie's backstory, which was covered in the Left Behind behind DLC in the first game. And honestly, we might have another episode 3 situation on our hands, but hey, we'll wait and see. Now as far as my favorite part in this week's episode, it would probably have to be when Joel and Tommy reunited. I just thought that moment was like, it was real nice. It was nice. I liked it. Let me know what your favorite moment from this week's episode was down in the comment section below. And also, let me know how you guys felt about this week's episode. Did you think it was too slow? Did you like the adaptations? Did you not like them? Let me know down below. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much Shit. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoy. And if you want to see more, like this shit. Oh yeah, and one time for the one time. Let me get a ear.